Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation with complex numbers. We have z plus i equals the square root of z i and we're going to be solving for z. We've done similar problems before. If you remember, we did z plus i equals z i. We did z plus i to the second power equals z i and so on and so forth. And this is actually similar to those problems. And you're going to probably recognize when we do the next thing, which is squaring both sides. Obviously, uh, we could talk about two different methods here, but let's go ahead and start with squaring both sides. Now, when we square both sides, we're going to get rid of the radical, and that's going to give us z plus i squared equals z i, right? There's only one square, but there are two squares. So make sure you know that distinction with complex numbers. Now, when you go ahead and expand the left-hand side, you're going to get z squared plus 2zi or 2iz is probably better because z is the variable. And then plus i squared equals zi. Now, i squared is negative 1. And if you subtract 1zi from 2zi, you're going to get 1zi or iz. z squared plus iz minus 1 equals 0. That is a quadratic equation. One thing to be careful about, though. When you square both sides in a radical equation, you must check for extraneous solutions. Solutions that kind of creep in because we square both sides, right? So we need to make sure uh, the, find, the solutions we find satisfy the original problem. When I say the original problem, I mean what is given, not after we square it because we're modifying the equation and therefore we're changing the domain. Okay, so now this is our quadratic. Let's go ahead and solve it first. And to solve it, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Even though the coefficients are complex numbers, we can still use it. z equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That would be i squared plus 4. And notice that i squared is negative 1. So this is going to give us a real number under the radical, which is nice because then we're not going to have a complex piece there. It's just going to be square root of 3. Make sense? So we can kind of write it as negative i plus minus the square root of 3 over 2. Or if you want, which is actually a little better, plus minus square root of 3 minus i over 2. Now obviously we can split it up into root 3 over 2 minus 1 half i or negative root 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. Notice that the imaginary part is not going to change. The real part is negated because that's what the plus minus sign is. And by the way, I know I'm writing it upside down. That's how I write plus minus sign. That's how I got used to writing it that way. And since then, I've been writing it that way. Okay. So now, though these uh, seem to be the solutions. Is that it though? Like, are there any other solutions to this equation? Let's go ahead and explore a little bit more. And again, we need to make sure that our solutions satisfy the original equation. Okay. Cool. Let's go back a little bit. And I'm kind of thinking about, could there be some trivial solutions like z equals 0? Well, in this case, if you repla replace z with 0, i squared is not the same thing as 0. So it's not going to work. But it's always good to check because sometimes you get some easy, quick and easy, cheap solutions by just replacing z with 0. Especially when you have something like this, right? If you have something like this, obviously, 0 is going to satisfy, right? Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can check the solutions. So our original problem was z plus i equals square root of x z i. By the way, I just want to tell you something. Remember, I think in another video we, we did this problem. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I feel like I did. So we had an equation like this. Maybe we didn't do it, but anyways. You know, this equation came from there, but the solutions to the second equation, the bottom one, may not always be the solutions to the top one because we changed it. And if you think about it, uh, there's another equation that will result in the same equation when both sides are squared. That Again, that kind of explains, obviously, these two equations probably don't have the same solutions or maybe they're sharing a solution. I don't know. I haven't checked it. But notice that two different equations can produce the same output. Make sense? That's why it's important to check. Anyways, that's a quick uh, heads up. And now let's go ahead and plug in 
uh, our solutions into the original one, not these. So let me go ahead and erase them. I don't want to get confused. And I just want to stick with my original problem. And here's my solutions. How do you check? Just plug it in. Uh, square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i plus i. Is that the same as, we don't know yet, i times square root of 3 i, square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. So let's go ahead and uh, simplify both sides and then see if they are equal at the end. Okay, now, if you simplify this one, negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. So it's going to give you root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. And this expression right here is going to give you, and I'm not putting the equal sign because I'm going to do that at the end if they're equal. This is going to be negative 1 half i squared, which is positive 1 half, plus root 3 over 2 i. Now, you got to think about it very, uh, you know, very carefully. You have to be very careful. This is actually e to the power i times, if you think about it, this is the cosine of 60 degrees over pi over 3. So this number can actually be expressed as e to the power i pi over 3. And its square roots, there's going to be two of them. One of them is going to be e to the power i times pi over 6, which is uh, 30 degrees. And, and by the way, it's this one. So one of the roots is going to be this one, so I guess we can accept it. And the other solution is just going to be e to the power i times pi over 6. You're going to add pi to it, and that's going to give you 7 pi over 6, right? So it's going to be something like this. But obviously, in this case, it's not going to be the same as this one. So one of the roots work, and if we take that, you know, if you want to call that principal square root, then this solution is actually going to work. By the way, this is not the solution this would be the solution, which is the first one that I found, right? So this one seems to check. What about the second one? Let's go ahead and plug in the second one here. So we have negative root 3 over 2 minus 1 half i, and I'm supposed to add i to it. And then on the other hand, I need to evaluate square root of zi. Let's see if they're equal. This is going to give me, again, negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i, as before. And this is going to give me the square root of i times negative root 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. Be careful, you're not plugging this in, you're plugging this one in, okay? And when you multiply this, it's going to be the square root of 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. Now we're going to find the angle for this one, and obviously this is also going to have two square roots. But now think about it, which angle is going to give you a 1 half? Normally, if in, this was in the first quadrant, it would give me cosine of 60 degrees, right? Or pi over 3. But it's in the fourth quadrant, therefore I kind of need to reflect it across the x-axis, which is going to give me 2 pi minus pi over 3, and that will be, what, 5 pi over 3, right? So that's going to be my angle. In other words, uh, 300 degrees, right? And if I square root that, uh, the square roots are going to be e to the power i times 5 pi over 6, and this one is going to be e to the power i times, if you add pi to it, you're going to get 11 pi over 6. Okay, great. Now we have to think about it very carefully. Our number right here, which uh, must be satisfied, is this one, right? That's what we need to check. Uh, is one of these equal to that one? 5 pi over 6 is basically 150 degrees, and 150 is actually going to be here. And its sign is positive, so it's not going to work, because we need to be in the third quadrant. But if you check this one, that's 330 degrees, and that's not going to be in the third quadrant either, because 330 is going to be right here. You see, these are the two square roots of my zi, and they don't, or they're not equal. To, actually, wait a minute. I don't think I'm doing the right thing. They're supposed to equal this one, right? Okay, exactly. Sorry, I just messed up. So negative root 3 over 2, then that means we're, we have to be in the second quadrant, and yes, one of them works, so I can actually take this, which means this solution is also a good one. Therefore, both of our solutions are good and valid, as far as I know. But are there any other solutions? Let's go ahead and check real quick what we get from Wolfram Alpha. Complex solutions, we only get one. Why did we only get one? Why didn't the other solution work? I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.